Hey guys, my name is Rich. Welcome to the A Diver's Life YouTube channel in Sunny Bonaire. We want to thank all of you for watching. Dorita and I started this channel to help others live a life like us on an island and scuba diving. It's a beautiful life, but it's not for everyone. And if you want to do it, we hope we can help you get there. Today we're going to take you to the most biodiverse wonderland on the planet. Raja Pot in Indonesia. We hope you enjoy it. Thank you. The islands of Indonesia, or the Indonesian archipelago, consists of over 17,500 officially listed islands. These islands are shown here in white. The official language of Indonesia is Bahasa Indonesia. Due to the remoteness of many of the islands, over 800 dialects exist. Some of the smaller island residents never see people from outside their individual island community. Bahasa Indonesia, a standardized version of Malay, is the sixth most widely spoken language in the world after Mandarin, English, Hindi, Spanish, and Arabic. With dialect variations, Malay Indonesian is spoken by as many as 250 million people worldwide. There are seven regions of Indonesia. Java, the world's most populous island with roughly 145 million people, is also home to the capital of Jakarta. Kalimantan, the Indonesian part of Borneo, the Maluku Islands, an Indonesian archipelago of roughly 1,027 islands located in the Banda Sea. The Lesser Sunda Islands, which are located in the Java Sea north of Australia. These contain the top tourist destinations of Bali, and Lombok, as well as Komodo, home to the Komodo dragon. Sumatra, the world's sixth largest island. Sulawesi, which many of the area's best dive masters and ship captains come from, including our liveaboard. Western New Guinea, or West Papua, includes Raja Ampat and the city of Sarong, where the major Raja Ampat liveaboards currently moor. Rajampat and much of Indonesia reside inside the Coral Triangle. The Coral Triangle refers to a triangular-like marine area that includes the waters of Indonesia, Malaysia, Papua New Guinea, Philippines, Solomon Islands, and Timor-Leste. While only covering 1.6% of the planet's oceanic area, the region has 76% of the world's known coral. It encompasses the highest diversity of coral reef fishes in the world. More than 3,000 species of fish live in the Coral Triangle. The reason for the area's biodiversity in part lies in the area's past. While other marine habitats have been frozen in ice during ice ages or left high and dry by falling sea levels, this area of the world remained mostly underwater. As a result, marine life has been allowed to evolve unhindered. Added to that, while other areas of the world drifted from the equator to temperate and even polar regions as a result of plate tectonics, this area remained near the tropics in warm, clear water, which provides the perfect environment for coral reefs, the most productive and diverse of all habitats on Earth. This continued stability in ideal conditions over millions of years has created a biological wonderland we are now beginning to understand and appreciate. Another reason for the abundance of life is the Indonesian through flow or ITF. This ocean current has importance for global climate since it provides a pathway for warm, fresh water to move from the Pacific to the Indian Ocean serving as the upper branch of the global heat conveyor belt, moving more than 15 million cubic meters per second of water. Rajampat and the Coral Triangle are in the direct path of this water flow, enabling nutrients and species of fish to constantly flow through the area. This current also helps regulate temperature, which has helped maintain the diversity and health of coral. Now that we know a bit about where we are going, let's set off on our adventure to Raja Ampat. We start our journey from the Bonaire International Airport at 9 o'clock in the evening. 
Bonaire International Airport is in Carlandike near the center of Bonaire and close to Klein Bonaire. The airstrip is really quite large and they have in fact landed a Boeing 787 here. The first leg of our trip involves a nine hour flight to Amsterdam Schiphol Airport in the Netherlands. This is a fantastic airport with access to many parts of the world. To start adapting to the time zone difference, we stayed overnight near the airport. We have found that with such long trips, it is best to stay overnight at different legs of your trip to help your body adapt to the time and rest. You can't expect to race across the globe, hop in the ocean, and expect everything to feel wonderful. If you do, then expect to miss out on a few dives. The next leg of our trip involved a 14-hour flight to Jakarta on the Indonesian island of Java. Plan on a long layover in Jakarta as there are not a lot of flights heading to the final stop of Sarong, but also because the flight times are constantly getting changed. It's better to have the extra time to ensure you won't miss your flight. Our layover was just over 12 hours. We recommend reserving either half-day or full-day hotel rooms in Jakarta. Our next flight was a four-hour flight to Sarong, where we would get on our liveaboard dive boat to Rajampat. Although Sarong is remote, we found a bustling small city on the move. After telling you how remote Sarong was, I had to laugh yeah, yeah, listening yeah, to yeah, Trink yeah, tell yeah. the driver how Bonaire had only 20,000 people uh, and donkeys and goats uh, running uh, around uh, wild. Eight o'clock? Nine, nine, nine. 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 church. After listening to mopeds like these zoom past our hotel window all night, we were quite pleased to arrive at the dock the next morning to get on our liveaboard cruise ship. Here we are on the Rajam Pod Aggressor. Everybody's getting all of their gear unpacked. And uh, we had a little drama here. Two of the dive dinghies were stolen, and uh, I assume we're keeping these things, but it might be a little bit harder for the camera gear because uh, they had uh, places to put the camera gear. But it'll work out. Looks nice. Rinse oh, yeah, tanks, yeah, yeah. everything, all set to go. One of the things that we noticed right away was the unique style of motorized sailing yachts called a panisi. They are two-masted like a catch, but unlike the western style catch, they seldom have a boom. Also, the gaff can't be lowered so that it can be used as a crane in the harbor. With everything secured, we will now motor overnight to our first dive spots near the island of Missoula. As the sun rises, our eyes awaken to an area it seemed time forgotten. In the distance is our first dive, the island called Two Trees. Entering the sea, we discover a world seldom disturbed by man. Clark's anemone fish become vibrant in our life. Life is everywhere. Coral resembling a tree of ice crystals. A mantis shrimp. 
pristine coral two meters wide. Yellow damselfish and reticulated dasilis dance within the coral. Here is a stonefish. Their venom can be lethal. This is a crocodile fish. Can you see him? Our next dive brings us to Ferrandi Pinnacle and this massive sea fan. Here we see reticulated and three-spot dasilis. Here we see a field of lettuce coral, some three meters across. What is this? A Wobegong shark. And a five-spine swimming crab. Kubaryana's Nembrotha nudibranch. This gorgonian is three meters wide. This squat shrimp is two centimeters. False clown anemone fish use anemones to hide from predators. Fusilier dashed through large hard coral dotted with Christmas tree worms. Then there is more fish and more immense coral for fish to hide. Our next dive brings us to Baby Rock and more fish. Green points out huge schools of blue and yellow fusilier on the point. Just behind them is a school of large blanthead batfish. I swam under the ledge from the other side and turned on my lights. They were unfazed and I became part of the school. Talk about a room with a view. We drop down the wall and are greeted by hundreds of ruddy fusilier. Dropping down deeper, we see schools of black spot angelfish, batfish, and more ruddy fusilier. Next, we see a large school of oxi scat. This orange fin anemone fish like to dart under and out the other side of this anemone's fingers. This gorgonian made us speechless. Soft corals shrink during the day and fill up with water to catch prey at night.
Going deeper on the wall, we find this giant white gorgonia. Under this ledge, I found a long fin bannerfish and black snappers. Making our way back to the light, the wall colors ignite. Doreen hangs out on the colorful safety stop with the dive guide gem. In the next episode, we will continue our diving among the islands surrounding Missoula. High current dives will be on the menu, as well as strategies to handle them, so get yourself in shape. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit the subscribe button to see more on this channel.